All right, folks, here we go. Um, I'm going to call Michael, and we're going to get Michael Spear on the phone real quick. And I'm going to put him on speakerphone and check my levels. Hey, brother. Hey, Michael. Okay, listen, I'm just checking levels. I'm actually live recording, but can you just say I'm here? This is Michael Spear, just whatever. I'm here. This is Michael Benjamin Spear. All right, cool. We're good. Okay, so I'm going to begin the, the container testimony for everybody. I'm going to set the phone down, and I'm going to let you listen, and then, you know, uh, I'll, I'll call you in, and then, you know, you give your testimony, and we'll just work it out with everybody and show everybody what happened. Cool? Sounds wonderful, brother. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to put the phone down. And um, can you hear me all right down there? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly fine. Okay, good. I'm going to go ahead and start this then. Okay, so here we go. All right, Michael, just you'll be there listening on the side, and I'll call you when I need you, and we'll get into the show notes and all that good stuff, okay? Sounds wonderful, brother. Okay, here we go. Okay, guys, um, here we go. So before I begin, I would like to stop and just pray. I think we should all pray together. It should be a corporate prayer and just thank God for what he's done here because this is, it's, it's astounding. It's literally, all I can say is who is like God? No one is like God, the Lord God. So here we go. In the name of the Lord God, Yeshua, Father Abba, hear my prayer. I pray that the words of my mouth and the intentions of my heart are perfect before you. And I I pray that you'll take my flesh, Jonathan's flesh, out of this equation and just let your spirit be seen and your evidence be seen clearly so that everybody that sees this can believe and understand that there is no other but you and that you've orchestrated every single bit of this. And that they could believe on the only name under heaven by which we must be saved. Yeshua, Jesus, the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. All right. Sorry, guys. Got something stuck in my tooth. Here we go. Y'all ready? Here we go. So let's do it this way. I've, I've got this desktop lined up for you guys. Let's talk about the letter Shin to begin I'm going to let somebody else talk about it who is very, very good about explaining it. So prepare for about seven minutes of an incredible understanding of the letter Shin and its relationship to the Lord God. Because <laughs> wait till you see where all this goes. Now, here's the, here's the thing. I just want to relax. I want everybody to enjoy yourself. This is amazing. This is going to be fun and amazing. So get some popcorn if you want to pause it. Pause it. Go get some coffee, whatever. We're going to be here for a while. There's a lot of data to show you guys. And there's so much supernatural that you'll probably be dizzy by the time this is over. I know that Kat's been dizzy a lot. I know Michael's been uh, dealing with it on a, another level. And I know that I've been getting kind of woozy trying to process the amount of data and the amount of impossible, it's hard for the human mind to wrap yourself around this. So let's go ahead and let's start with the basics. Let's get this out of the way. This is a great video, so let's do this now. Here we go. The 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Shin. The numeric value of Shin is 300. The pictogram or symbol behind the shape of the letter Shin is flames of fire. It can also be seen as teeth. Fire consumes. Teeth are used to make food ready for consumption. The word Shin is spelled Shin Nun. The Hebrew word for a tooth is Shen, the same spelling Shin Nun, but a slightly different pronunciation. 
Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 3 records God saying to the people of Israel through Moses as they were about to enter the promised land. Know therefore today that it is the Lord your God who is crossing over before you as a consuming fire. In Hebrew, Ve'yadata ha'yom ki Adonai Elohecha hu ha'over lefanecha esh ochlahu. The Hebrew word that represents the name of the Lord is yud he vav he yud he vav he is a hint of Jesus. Adonai Elohecha, the Lord your God. Also in the verse, a consuming fire, esh ochla. The word for fire in Hebrew is esh, spelled aleph shin, the first letter and the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew letter that is inscribed on the side of the phylactery prayer box used by observant Jews and on the box on the doorpost, the mezuzah of Jewish homes, is a shin, the letter shin. It stands for Shaddai, spelled shin dalet yud, which means almighty, El Shaddai, God Almighty. In Jewish tradition, Shaddai is an acronym for Shomer Daltot Yisrael, guardian of the gates of Israel. Jesus is the door, the gate, through whom all must pass in order to enter. Jesus is God Almighty. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, in a verse prophetic of Jesus, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son will be given, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Note that this verse refers to his name, name singular. Yet there are hints of the Trinity in this verse. Counselor, we know that this is a title for the Holy Spirit. Everlasting Father, well, that speaks for itself. Note, the Holy Spirit comes in Jesus' name. Note also that Jesus is the name of the Father. The Father gave this name, His name, to the Son. You will find this truth stated clearly by Jesus in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, what is known as Jesus' high priestly prayer before He went to Gethsemane and to the cross. Four times in John 17, Jesus says that His name is the Father's name. Jesus is the only name given under heaven by which we may be saved. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, the Son, Jesus, also has the title Mighty God, El Gibor. Now, El Gibor, Mighty God, is not exactly El Shaddai. It is a hint. It is when we come to the New Testament that we see clearly that Jesus is called the Almighty. The book of Revelation reveals Jesus in his glory. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 says that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. At verse 8 we read of Jesus, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word Almighty in the Greek text is Opantokrator. No question, this can only be translated as the Almighty. We've been saying that there is a design, God's hand of design in the Hebrew alphabet. The first 11 letters of the alphabet speak of our rescue, the fact that Jesus rescued us out of the world, out of darkness. The next 11 letters speak of our race, the fact that we are called on to persevere in faith in Jesus to the end. The first letter Aleph and the last letter Tav speak of Jesus. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. If we were speaking in the Greek of the New Testament, we would say the Alpha and the Omega. In the Hebrew alphabet, we then have five pairs of letters following Aleph and five pairs of letters in the second half leading up to Tav. Five and five, guys. The letters go together naturally. 
two by two. And now we have come to the final pairing, Resh and Shin. Resh points to Jesus as the servant king, the suffering servant, who came to bear our sin, to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. And Shin points to Jesus as the conquering king, the almighty, all-powerful king, who is returning to take his rightful place with rule over everything. Israel, in the main, missed their Messiah when he came the first time. They were so focused on their expectation of a conquering king come to deliver them from their enemies that they missed the suffering servant. That is God's order. First the cross, then the crown. But Jesus is coming back, and this time it will be on the clouds in great glory. Every eye will see him. He will be a consuming fire. For those who have not received his salvation by trusting in him and his work on the cross, it will be a day of judgment, a day kept for judgment and destruction of the ungodly. It is a wise person who humbles himself, even as Jesus did, and looks not to their own good works, but to what Jesus has done for us. Receive him. He is our hope. All right. Michael, could you hear that? No, I couldn't hear the, the recording, but okay, I can't I, do it already. All right. I was trying to like mic it through my headset for you a little bit. Anyway, okay, so we're done with that. I want to point something out to everybody so everybody understands that it, the Hebrew alphabet was broken down in two sets of 11 uh, char characters. That's uh, 11 and 11 is 22. Now, remember, the key of David is the number 22. If you look up the biblical meaning of if you look up the biblical meaning of the number 22, which is, I, I've told everybody, and I'm going to make this statement before this video goes any further. Today I had someone else show up at my house, unannounced, uninvited. There is no love in that. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. If you all know that I've had people that showed up unannounced, that were a threat to the safety of my child. And I've asked everybody, please don't ever do that because every time it's happened, it's turned out badly. If you're truly, uh, if you've seen me on YouTube and you truly love me, you will never show up in my house. Therefore, if you show up in my house, you can only be perceived one way. And so as I talked with this person very briefly, which I said, no, I'm not gonna talk, even talk to you. I took a moment just to show her the error of her thought process and that it is completely unscriptural. It's unloving. It is not doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. Because Michael and I now are going, our, our addresses are out in the general public. This woman went and found mine, looked, hunted it down. And I said, well, why don't you just try and contact me through the proper channels, leave an email at one of my websites and she said, well, I'm not tech savvy. I said, really, jk at jonathanclick.com. How did you find my address? And she told me how she had hunted it down. And I went, wow, that doesn't make any sense, does it? You're not tech savvy, but you could use technology to hunt down my address. But you can't use technology simply to write me an email. So there is a spirit of error right there. That is incorrect. Okay, now I'll say this, and I'll have Michael, we're both going to state publicly, no one is allowed to come to my house uninvited for any reason, for any reason whatsoever at all. My house is private. I do not accept any outside guests. Michael, would you like to do the same thing? Yes, and no one's allowed to come to my property, and I'm already experiencing it as well. There's and, people already showing up. And, and you have two children to protect, is that true? That is correct. So we are parents of children, and we will view that as a hostile arrival because we have to. And because every time someone's shown up here, it's gone, it's been bad. 
This one ended without incident. However, it is absolutely forbidden, and I'm saying it publicly, to come by my house. And Michael's saying the same thing. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, let's get to it because God is in the detail, folks. And part of the reason I had to make that statement, Michael did, is because we want to show you guys just how in the details God is because it's so amazing. Okay, so we have 11 letters on one half, our rescue, and then... That Jesus rescued us out of the world, out of darkness. Out of darkness. He, he rescued us out of darkness and into the light. And so 11, 11 letters represent our rescue. Next 11 letters speak of our race. And the other 11 letters speak of our race. And the 11 and 11 is 22. And by the way, the biblical meaning of 22 is the key of David, which also happens to be part of my address that the Lord told me. Your address is very significant, Jonathan. I want you to look it up. And it is 8. And I'll show you the meaning of the number 8. The number eight in the Bible signifies resurrection and regeneration. It is the number of a new beginning. Eight is seven plus one, since it comes just after seven, which itself signifies an end to something. So eight is also associated with the beginning of a new era or a new order. Okay, so then the number 22. Because the Lord told me, Jonathan, even your address, I'm in the details of everything. So, the number 22, the biblical uh, meaning of number 22. Um, you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you two. two um, again, these are biblical meanings. This is not some numerology. This is the biblical meaning of the number 22. I showed you the biblical meaning of 8. I'm going to show you the biblical meaning of 22. And the key of the house of David I shall lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open, and none shall shut. And he shall shut, and none shall open. That's from, uh, by the way, also Revelation 3, the letter to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Now, the night I got saved, the Lord opened a door for me. And when I went out that door to meet Michael, an angel, at the bottom of those stairs, and I prayed, Our Father, my girlfriend, Eleuthera, which means licentious freedom, was saying, don't go out the door. And the Bible says, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you Eleuthero. So I had Eleuthera saying, don't open the door, female goddess worship. And I hear the Lord God saying, go out the door, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And the word for free is Eleuthero. It's a male version of Eleuthera. So here we go. So he opened that door for me. The key of David is a term found in Revelation and Isaiah. There it is. See, the key of David is a term found in Revelation and Isaiah. A key indicates control or authority. Therefore, having the key of David would give one control over David's domain, i.e. Jerusalem, the city of David, and the kingdom of Israel. The fact that Revelation 3, 7, Jesus holds this key shows that he is the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant, the ruler of the new Jerusalem and the Lord of the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to stop there for a second. Now, I told you guys that shipping container, I told you before we ever picked it up, there's a video on YouTube. The Lord told me, put Revelation 3.10 on the shipping container before you ever pick it up, Jonathan. And I did what the Lord said, and there it is in my backyard. It says Revelation 3.10. No one can argue with that. It, there's a video on YouTube where it got picked up before it got picked up. It said Revelation 3.10. Recently, the Lord told me to put two shin symbols on it, one on each door. We'll get to that in just a minute. Okay, so now let's go back. Okay, so let me go back to here. And let me go back to this one. Okay, so now we need to establish, and everybody needs to understand, you're not born in this world with the Holy Spirit. That's why you have to be converted. You, you're born with the Spirit, but it's not the Spirit of the living God. It's the Spirit of the world. So, so let's take a look at that. 
And let's be very clear about it. Okay, so here we go. Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh. Again, I'll do the King James. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I'll give you a heart of flesh. Okay, so now, according to the Bible and according to Jesus and according to everything we understand about Christianity, you must be born again. Jesus said it to Nicodemus, Verily I say unto you, unless you're born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. So you have to be born of the Holy Spirit, not the spirit that's in everybody that's alive walking on the planet. Everybody has a spirit, but it's the spirit of the prince of the power of the air. It is the spirit that runs the world, although God is in control over all that as well. Okay, so let's be very clear. You must be born again of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now we're going to go to Galatians. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, so now this is where we're going to begin the personal testimony stuff. And the Lord told me, man, I got a lot of untrusted certificates trying to access my computer right now. So the Lord told me that you must begin by giving them the reason you're this harbinger that I've called Michael's come into the mix now here at the very end. And everything's been orchestrated and you're going to see that. You, you, you might not be able to be deal with it. It's, it's going to be so overwhelming to you. But I want to show you a axiom. Um, has anyone ever heard the devil is in the detail? Okay, well... All the commercials I break down, like the Bud Light commercial. Hi, I'm Kelly, which means female warrior. Hey, if I give you this Bud Light, are you up for whatever happens? And the guy's name is Ian, which means gift from God. They make a deal. So Kelly, the female warrior, met, touches Ian, gift from God. And then he's off to a bachelorette party where everybody's got twins. Okay, all these commercials I break down for you, the Scion commercial, which doesn't even need breaking down, the little deviants that come from underground, unleashing demon brothers. It's not about a car. All these commercials, everything I show you that's hidden, all that stuff. Okay, all that stuff that you see that is hidden, it comes from the devil is in the detail. It is an idiom that refers to to a catch or mysterious element hidden in the details. Okay, well, that's what I show you guys all the time. Meaning that something might seem simple at first look, but will take more time and effort to complete than expected and to rise from an earlier phrase, God is in the detail. Expressing the idea that whatever one does should be done thoroughly, i.e. details are important. Okay, so the idea that God is in the detail is going to open up your mind probably to, uh, to a level that you've never actually seen. Because God was in the detail of this house. He made sure there were three head symbols on it. He made sure that I uh, took out the middle wall of partition that I'm sitting right under first, which is, fulfills Ephesians 2. He is our peace. He himself is our peace who has broken down the middle wall of partition. So the middle wall of partition came out of this house. It opened up the whole house. Okay. Um, and God was in all the details of this entire house. He was in the details of me closing in the carport and turning that into my art room. And that room over there has all the stuff that I did before I got saved. It's got all this artwork that shows you know, the Garden of Eden and fornication, naked women carved in grinders with lights, using lights as paint. It shows all this stuff that is just hard to believe that anyone could really do all that artwork having even never read the Bible. So how, somehow I carved everything in metal using lights as, as my medium to light up the images. And everything that I carved in that metal is in the Bible, which I'd never read. That's kind of crazy. Okay, so 
God is in all the details. This house, you don't you don't go in a front door. You either go to the right or you go to the left. That's funny. Well, if you're at this house looking out, the side to the right is a side that has the three hat symbols on it. Let me show those to you real quick so you can see what I'm talking about so you understand. So the side to the right, if you if you look at this house from the front, it has three head symbols that are in the same orientation as the cross of Calvary. There you go. And so here's the front of the house right here. And you'll see these red clay bricks are made out of clay. What's really odd is they're in columns of gray bricks. And the gray bricks have a metallic constant because they're like granite. Okay, so here's clay inside metal. So there's one, two, three het symbols and you can see it's a het 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 and that's the same thing that's the same symbol that they put over the doors when they were getting ready to leave Egypt it's called the exodus so during the exodus they put the blood of a, a spotless lamb on the doorposts and over the lintel and that showed the angel of death don't kill the people in this house they are covered by the blood of the Lamb. It was a foreshadowing of Christ coming. It's amazing. Well, here is a picture of a, a doorpost in ancient Egypt right there, what it would look like with the blood of the Lamb over it on, on the doorpost and right over the lintel. Okay, and so here's the three head symbols on the front of my house. And then if you look at the house itself, here is one corner, here is another corner, and here is the middle just like the orientation of the crosses at Calvary. Het, het, het. Wow, het, het, het. Now, just like you saw the guy that just got through speaking, the Jewish alphabet is like, in the way the Bible is written, is absolute perfection. And let me just show you what three hets together are is 888. So if you look at what's called the Jewish gematria, the number 888, uh, it means the salvation of our God. And so there it is. Each hat symbol is the eighth letter of the alphabet in Hebrew. And it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. And he took his wife and knew her not until she had brought forth her first son, and called his name Jesus. Okay, so there it is, Jesus, Jesus, 888. So, written on this house that I'm in, that I'm speaking to you from right now, with magenta and white flowers behind me, and the axe of Peter on the wall, and the middle wall of partition taken down, this house has his name on it. The container out back, has Revelation 3.10 written on it because it's a fulfillment of the Davidic covenant of the key of David, which is the angel of the Church of Philadelphia. Now, just keep watching. So now we're going to go back and we're going to give a testimony. So I'm going to start my testimony and we're going to start weaving it together now. So here we go. So my house is 8, which means a new beginning and the salvation of God and the regeneration and then 22 the david the the davidic covenant and the ruler of the new jerusalem um it's so fascinating that lady that ran up and said get a crown get a crown put a crown on it <laughs> that's so crazy so anyway so here we go now let me show you who i was before i got saved and let me show you who paul was paul was a murderer Okay, so Paul was a murderer. Let me show you, he killed Christians. Let me show you his testimony before King Agrippa. He said he would open their eyes, that he was sent from God, delivering the, the, from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I nice send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them, look at this, from darkness to light. Let me go to my 
let me go back to my personal testimony folder here. Okay, so I was a pro skydiver falling out of the sky upside down with fangs on. And it says, come out of the darkness into the light. Okay, let's go back to Acts 26. So his, his mission was to open their eyes. Well, my sunglass company, my mission was to have sunglasses so good that vampires could see. Oh, isn't that interesting? We're all vampires. You're in a vampiric system. You're in a cannibalistic system. And that's why I had vampire sunglasses. And to turn them from darkness to light. Again, that is exactly the tagline for the company. Come out of the darkness into the light. And turn them from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance amongst them which are sanctified by faith in me. Okay, so now let's go back to personal testimonies. Let me show you something really odd. Come out of the darkness and there's Johnny falling out of the sky upside down with fangs on. Now, you know what? I've shown you all this and I, I don't want to spend a lot of time but I want you to see the fangs because even the word that you just saw in the letter Shin, it means teeth. And there's a guy that's got some pretty sharp teeth right there in his mouth. And he's falling upside down out of the sky. And his logo is a V with fangs right there on both shoulders. You can see it. And I'm jumping an infinity rig, just oddly enough. Now, come out of the darkness, because we all live in darkness on this world until you're converted. Come out of the darkness. Let me see. Let me get this thing to repopulate. There we go. So come out of the darkness, because you're upside down and you're in a vampiric system. Now look at this, into the light. So that's our tagline, come out of the darkness in the light. Same thing as Paul. Paul said he was told to call them out of the darkness in the light. Let me show you something very odd. After this, let me show you, here's just a very odd photo of a sky surfing picture where I got to sky surf with the space shuttle Discovery behind me. Now, if you don't believe that's me, there's another picture of it. There you go. That's me. And I'm holding one of these pictures. So, very oddly enough, I look like I'm crucified, don't I? I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me for who loved me and gave his, himself as a sacrifice for me. Okay, so isn't that odd that during the space shuttle discovery, right there, I look like I'm crucified. Let me show you something even weirder. Um, here's a picture. Oh, connection was interrupted. Time out, guys. I just happen to have another one ready to go. I knew that might happen. So let me... Um, let me get a new tab going real quick. I saw that coming, actually. Okay, so here we go. Let me show you something really odd. Here's another picture I have. Well, you see, that's the same position as a sky surfing picture I just showed you. But what's really fascinating about this is I took this that was a slide. This was a 35 millimeter slide. And during like one uh, part of the art show stuff I was doing and displaying my artwork, I had a giant painting that was bigger than that entire corner. And I took a projector and I projected the slide of that sky surfing right on top of a giant painting. And that's the painting. And let me show that to you because everything is in the details. You're gonna know who I am, you're gonna know who Michael is. So look at the big face that's up in the sky right here. See the eye, this is a painting, see the eye. Here's the nose. So here's a giant face in the sky. Here's the lip right here, there's the nose. Nostril, there's nose, eye, eye. 
And there's Johnny, like a shadow that looks like he's crucified. Because not only was I falling out of the sky upside down, but I would later be crucified with Christ, fulfilling the paradigm of the upside down and the right side up paradigm. I'm literally fulfilling it as a, a manifestation of it in my life. I am a living, walking, talking manifestation of the fulfillment of the right side up, upside down paradigm, turning from the power, and I'm going to show you on your screen, from the power of Satan to the power of God. Because Satan, is his kingdom's upside down, and God's is right side up. So anyway, so there it is. That's just another thing. And so, as we continue, uh, here is what I used to worship. This is what I used to worship. Most men do. And look how it says, rise with the sun. Well, you know, S-U-N is the way you spell sun in the sky. But, a, but a, 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 the letter O, uh, making a sun in the sky, makes a much better poster. And so, when you say, rise with the sun... And you put a mirror reflection on it. It makes a much better poster if you're selling sunglasses. Rise with the S-O-N. And it's upside down and backwards, isn't it? It's just crazy. It's a mirror reflection. It's like you're standing on a mirror. And here's what I used to worship. And El Luthera, the Bible says, uh, in the ex earnest expectation of the creature, you know, awaits the glorious liberty of the sons of God. The word liberty is Eleuthera. It means licentious or legitimate freedom. Obviously, I chose licentious. Licentious freedom. The Bible says you'll know the truth and the truth will set you Eleuthero. And that's when I turn from worshiping this to worshiping the creator instead of the creature because we all began to worship the creature instead of the creator. Okay, so now here we go. Now, this is where I got saved, St. Anthony Hotel. Y'all can go watch that on YouTube, the whole thing. But what's really important is when I, after the Lord had called me in the hotel room and I walked to the elevators, when I got to the elevators, I was being led by the Spirit because the Spirit of God had already descended on me and started leading me. And when I got to the elevators, there was this symbol and there was a guy in the stairs in the middle flame. And I went back to the room and I got Lou and I, and I told her, I said, Lou, I said, hey, Lou, come here. I want to show you something. I'd already left the hotel room. I was leaving the hotel. And then I got to the elevator and I said, check this out. And there was a triangle with an X through it. And that was the second thing the Lord had shown me in the room. And he said, the pyramid is your enemy. And Lou said, that is weird. That is very strange. And then I looked at that symbol that's on the wall right there, you know, that's on right in front of the elevator. And the Lord said, go into the fire. Okay, now here's where we're going to begin this amazing, mind-blowing shipping container testimony that's already been a testimony of its own. Um, remember, it's got Revelation 3.10 on it. And the day they showed up to put it in the backyard, a guy named Jose, who almost, you know, he was scared of being stung by a bunch of wasps because there's a wasp nest in the corner. I killed the wasps, and he said, did you kill them all? And I said, of course, they're all dead. And he said, yeah, because we were in New Braunfels, Texas, and we hit this tree and cut it in half, and the entire sky turned black. And I went, what did you say? And George, who was here, I told you, he thought I was getting in a fight with the guy. Because I said, what did you say? Like, you know, like it was, it threw me off because he's like the whole sky turned black. Well, Revelation 3.10 means I'm going to keep you from the hour of testing. And the hour of testing is when that pit opens and all those locusts come out and the sky turns black. That's why I was like, oh my Lord. He, he really just said the sky turned black with flying stinging insects and the pits can open with flying stinging insects called locusts from the pit. I was just like, that's insane. And so I, I documented all that. It's been documented. Okay, so now we're getting into the testimony now. Everybody knows how I got saved, blah, blah, blah. Go back and watch it again. There's the bugs. There's the serpent. There's 
Barak from the garden. So there's the serpent bite. You know, there's all the stuff. There's Adam down in the Garden of Eden when I walked out of the alley after the first encounter with Michael after I prayed with him and received Christ. And there's Adam in the garden. And then oddly enough, there's Jesus Christ ascending. Let's let's click on that for just a moment. I'd like to give you guys a clearer view of that image. It's pretty amazing. Look at Adam down in the garden. And then look at Jesus ascending into heaven. You can see his two separate feet. He's not nailed to the cross. He's ascending into heaven. And he's looks like Adam's been redeemed. Uh, that's just unbelievable. You know, that's what I walked into right after I got saved. When I say walked into, you know, I exited the alley that way. It was a one-way alley, actually. And, you know, my conversation with Michael, he told me, you look like you need some water. You should go get some water at the bus station. He was directing me where to go. The Spirit was leading me. And I walked out, and the first thing I saw was that... And I saw whatsoever man soweth that must he also reap. Okay, now it is time to begin this testimony that now my dad died and and my dad uh, lied to me and he left even my house, even my house that he really doesn't own. He left it to my brother and my sister. And my brother and sister are making their move on this property. And they, uh, you know, and I've told them that there's no way you're keeping that shipping container. And so what I've done is I've, I've, I've made arrangements to move it to Grand Junction. Now, I'm going to begin this testimony and then I'm going to have Michael come on, who's, who's listening just quietly in the wings. And I'm going to begin this testimony by showing... Uh, by showing you guys a couple pictures. And so I'm going to have Michael go back and forth a little bit me, with me in just a second. I'm going to click on an e on a text message that is from March 17th, Saturday at 6.46 p.m. And, uh, okay, so now, Mike, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. So anyway, so Michael wrote me this text. It says, hey, brother, this is Michael. No matter what happens, or what Abba wants with your home, I just want you to know my home is yours. And you can do whatever you need to. I hope this eases your stress. I know how many of us have open doors for you, brother. Much love, and I wish I could help out more. Hopefully soon we will be able to. Please let us know if you need anything. We love you, and we are here for you. And even if you just need to vent, brother. So that was a text I got. But I hadn't really done a full-fledged um, video that was loaded up about what was going on, I don't believe. And so, Michael, why don't you tell everybody just the, sh the version of you sent me that text and then what happened at dinner and all that. So I felt in my spirit um, first to send that to Johnny. And what I felt in my spirit was they're coming. And so I had to intuition that uh, the enemy was coming for Jonathan and I could like feel like the stress I don't know how to put it into words and so then I sent that text okay so then you sent me the text and I and I thought well that's kind of I thought wow that's kind of interesting and then I'm like wow that was weird timing wise and so I texted Mike back or no I actually called Mike I called Mike up and I said, um, you know, I actually might need a place to put a shipping container. And then Mike texted me back and he said, 154 Rainbow Drive, Grand Junction, Colorado. And I wrote back and I said, well, that's interesting. And he wrote, drop off, pick up, whatever you need, brother, extra room, we are good. Okay, why don't you tell everybody just briefly when you sat down to dinner with with your wife and kids, how it kind of came together for you? Um, well, right after we sent this text out to Johnny, uh, we all sat down and we started to watch Jonathan's video. And we got through it, and I can't remember how long into it. It was like 10 minutes. And then Johnny started talking about what he's dealing with and what's coming at him a little bit. And we just started jumping up and down because when the Lord God starts orchestrating things, you might not 
realize what's happening at the beginning, but once the puzzle pieces start to connect, it's praise Abba the whole entire time. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of threw you for a loop, right? Yeah, like, wow. Exactly. Okay, so, okay, cool. So here's the point, folks, and let me like enlarge my screen a little bit uh, and just look at you. So, so Mike didn't know that I really needed help when he texted me. That's crazy. What's even crazier is that I said, well, I called him up and I'm like, you know, I may, you know, I was just kind of throwing it out there. I may need a place to put the container. Who knows? You know, I mean, I don't know what these guys are going to do. And, uh, you know, because y'all know the story when I was 16 years old. Uh, do I trust them? Uh, no, I don't. They have no character. Their character is that of the world. And so, you know, and I used to be the same as them. I'm, I'm not trying to slight them. I was probably worse than them. So anyway, I'm, I'm sure I was worse than them. But anyway, so then I told Mike, um, hey, uh, so he lives in Grand Junction, Colorado. That's where Mike me lives. Okay, but let me show y'all something in Esword so y'all understand the Bible and y'all understand Matthew 16. Okay, so Jesus said to Peter because he recognized him, he was the first one to recognize the Messiah. And he said, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, which means rock. Okay, by the way, Bono's new song, American Soul, you are rock and roll. He's, he's being cryptic. You are rock, like I am rock, like Peter is rock, and roll, turn it over. And then he said, you and I are rock and roll. And go. Uh, we're going to look at those lyrics in just a little bit. Um, and so the word Peter means rock. He says, so Jesus said, I'm going to call you rock. And upon this mass of rock, I'm going to build my church. And I want y'all to look at the word church. This is super important because Michael's address and Michael's place that's going to receive the container that is a representation, and I've told you this over and over again, it represents the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ. I've been public. You can go find it 20, 30 times in public, me saying that. I said that's what the container represents. It is a representation of the new Jerusalem, the new city of peace, which is the bride of Christ in Revelation 21. And I, John, saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, adorned like a bride. You know what I'm going to do for everybody real quick, Mike? I'm going to make sure they see the scriptures. You know, because a lot of people don't know and haven't seen the scriptures. So I'm, I'm just going to do the work for them. I'm not going to leave it to them to, to look it up. I'm going to help everybody out real quick. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys Revelation 3, a letter to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. And then I'm going to show you Revelation 21, the new Jerusalem. Okay, and I've already told you who I am. I don't care if you believe me or not. That's all right. Here we go. Here we go. Revelation 21 and Revelation 3. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> This is what's written, well, you know what, I'm going to start the whole thing. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. Let's go to my personal testimony. Let's go to my personal testimony. Remember, God is in the details. 22 is the key of David. 8 is a new beginning eight is regeneration and resurrection eight regeneration and resurrection and 22 the key of david let's go back okay so i live it in 8 22 regeneration resurrection key of david and a letter to the church angel of the church of philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true 100 percent no line he that hath the key of david 22 he that openeth and no man shutteth, like when he had me open that door in the back of that hotel so I could go meet his angel and get saved and pray to our Father and be converted, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works, behold, 
I have set before thee an open door. Let me go back to my personal testimony. Let me show you what he did for me. He opened a door in the back of a hotel that I knew if I opened that door, I would probably die, but I was willing to open it in order to know the truth. I had licentious freedom saying, don't open the door, but I had the Lord God saying, open the door, Jonathan, and I opened the door and I knew the truth and the truth set me Eleuthero. I went from mother goddess worship, female worship, Eleuthera to Eleuthero, the worship of the Lord God, and to complete freedom and exemption from moral and mortal liability because I listened to God and I opened the door and I I was willing to die to know the truth. Okay, so there we go. So there, I have set before you an open door and no man can shut it because no one can shut the door that the Lord God opened for me because once you're converted, I mean, I was saved. Now I can talk directly to him. That's why people, you know, say these weird things. Oh, yeah, he's not hearing from God. Well, if I'm not hearing from God, then how am I making everything manifest? Okay, there's, it's impossible. So anyway, so here we go. I've set before you an open door. And no man can shut it, for thou hast little strength. No kidding. And thou hast kept my word and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, and are not but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and know that I have loved thee. Okay? And then it says, because, here's Revelation 3.10, which is, this is what's written on the ship. Okay, guys, pay attention. This is what's written on the shipping container. Okay? The bride's not going through the great tribulation. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast to which thou hast, that no man can take thy crown. That's kind of funny. The other night, the other day, I walked into a coffee shop, and a woman ran over and said, Put a, Get the crown, get the crown. <laughs> That's so crazy. And then it says, Him that overcometh, I'll make a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go out no more. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Okay, so the church of Philadelphia, those that have the key of David, those that speak only truth and no lies, they will be part and that know Jesus is coming. And they've made themselves ready, just like they know their wedding's coming. You are the new Jerusalem right there, which cometh down out of heaven. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So here's the thing. You can't even hear this unless you've been given an ear to hear it. You can't understand it. There's no way. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Okay, so if you have the ear to hear it, you'll hear it. Okay, so now let me show you Revelation 21. Let me highlight the name of the city of my God, which is the New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, right there. I'm going to make it really big right on your screen. There it is. Okay, there it is. The New Jerusalem. Now let's go to Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first, first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city. Here it is. New Jerusalem. Coming down from God. Out of heaven. Prepared as a bride. Adorned for her husband. So according to the word of God. The new Jerusalem has been converted, has the key of David, speaks only truth, and has been made ready as the bride, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, now this is going to be very significant because we're going to get into Michael's testimony now too because now Michael has entered into the mix. Now we're talking about the bride of Christ now. Okay, well I told you 
that shipping container is going to Grand Junction at 154 Rainbow Drive at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. Now, here's the thing, guys. When I called Michael and I told Michael, hey, I might be sending you that container, Michael, you were starting to work on, what were you working on that day? Um, the Lord had me go to Home Depot and purchase wood um, so I can build a wedding arch. I'm going to show everybody a picture of that wood because you even took a photo of that wood and you sent it to me, didn't you? That is correct. Okay, and so I'm showing everybody a photo of the wood that you purchased that very same day before you knew I might be shipping you a shipping container. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, let me show everybody a receipt from Lowe's just so they know I even got the receipt from Lowe's that you sent me as well in order to document this. So now God is in the detail, folks. So there is Michael's purchase. There is Michael's purchase of wood from Lowe's right there. And it says three nineteen eighteen, And it was $75, I think, and 54 cents or something like that. So anyway, so now I'm going to go back. And so at that point, you and I started wigging out a little bit. I was like, I said, that's crazy. You're telling me you're building a wedding arch right now? And you were like, yeah, the Lord told me to build a wedding arch, and I've already bought the wood. And that's when I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's crazy. So you want to just do a brief spin on that real quick you want to tell everybody about that like what i was going through uh yeah yeah just you know so you were like wow that whatever just tell everybody give them a yeah, test so i heard johnny's voice getting all excited over it and now i'm getting a little extra excited and it was just one thing after the other that was just compounding it you know was, the lord was telling me to do this saying this look this up and then Jonathan will call and confirm something or show me something. And it was, it was like we we're in a whirlwind. <laughs> it was like one confirming witness after another, huh? Hey, Amen. All right. So, so let's, then let's get into the next little phase. So I'm like, okay, well, so the Lord led me look up Grand Junction. And so now remember, I showed y'all, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to show you what, the word church means. I told you, I, I got to show you what the ch word church means. And upon this rock, I will build my church. What rock? Well, Peter, along with Christ, uh, that is the paradigm. One's right side up, one's upside down. Peter's upside down because he's evil. Jesus is the foundation because he's not evil. So picture Jesus crucified right side up and Peter crucified upside down. There's that, that paradigm. That he's talking about. And I will build my church upon this rock. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now look at Matthew 16, 19. I colored the 1, 6 yellow and the 1, 6 and the 1, 9 green. Because 1, 6 and 1, 9 are opposite. Like a key turned into a lock and turned upside down. Even the, the number of the scripture... 16, 19, and I will give to thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. The word is kleis. It means a key as in shutting a lock figuratively or literally. There it is. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now, here's the word church. And I say you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. Let's look at the word church. It means a calling out, a popular meeting like a group of people all meeting together, especially a religious congregation, assembly church. Well, let's, let's back engineer it. Let's go to the root of the word. It means to call, to call forth, whose surname was called. That's weird. Michael, why don't you tell everybody what your names mean, and then I'll show them what my names mean real quick. All right. So my name is Michael Benjamin Spear, and Michael is one who is like God. Benjamin is the son of the right hand, 
and spear, which comes from S-P-E-R-E, um, means a watchman. So my name literally means one who is like God, who is the son of the right hand, and is my appointed watchman. There you go. And all this happened very suddenly, didn't it? With everything that With... we're going through right now, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so, and the word church means to bid, to call forth, whose surname was called. Okay, well, let me show you my surname real quick. I told you what my name means, but let's do it real quick so there's no details left out. Okay, Jonathan means, and I'll click on it because it won't be very clear. I'll just show you proof. Jonathan means God has given. Okay, so the name is taken as a sim and is symbolic of steadfast friendship and loyalty because like Jonathan and King David, Jonathan was willing to give the throne to David because he knew he was chosen by God. Okay, now click right here. It says variant of the word Glock, like Glock 9 millimeter, G-L-O-C-K. It means, it means, Hence, it means middle high German Glocka, apparently ultimately from, a, ultimately from a Celtic source, hence a topographic name of someone who lived by the bell tower of a church. Okay, let's go back to Matthew 16 when Jesus is talking about upon this rock, I will build my church. The a popular meaning, oh, like Grand Junction, great meaning. That's what Grand Junction means, great meeting. Okay, so I will build my church, a popular meeting, a congregation, a calling out. It means also to call, to bid forth whose surname was called. Okay, so let's go look at the surname. Okay, Kleck means someone who lived by a church, the bell tower of, of a church. It's a habitational name. From a house distinguished by the sign of a bell or a metonomic occupational name of a sexton, who among other duties was responsible for ringing the church bell. Well, do you all know why you would go out and ring a church bell? Ding, ding, ding. It's to call everybody to come to church, to come to the meeting. To call, let's all go to the meeting where I'm calling everyone together for church. That's what it means. Okay, so my surname, and, and I'll go back because that's my surname. Jonathan, Yahweh is given, God is given. Kleck, the surname means a someone who lived by the bell tower of a church and rang the church bell or a town crier. There you go. And so that's what my name means. My address means resurrection, regeneration, the key of David. There's three head symbols on my house, which is Jesus, the salvation of God. The middle wall of partition has been taken out. There's a vampire guy falling out of the sky, upside down, coming out of the darkness. There's a guy that looks like he's crucified into the light. And then now we're down at Michael's thing. And Michael's getting heavily involved. <laughs> God bless Michael, man. And so Michael lives in Grand Junction. Let's look at the word grand. And then let's look at the word junction. And Grand Junction means denoting the most important item of its kind. Like a grand entrance. I think that's prophetic. Because Jesus is going to make a grand entrance. I guarantee it. He's coming on the clouds of heaven and every eye will see him. Just like we saw in the beginning of this video. Okay, now it means the most important of its kind, grand, uh, monumental. Uh, okay, and then the word junction. Let me let this thing um, do its thing. And then the word junction. There it is. Let's. Let, this is mind-boggling. Get ready. So I showed you what the word church means. It means meeting. Grand Junction means convergence meeting point. <laughs> God is in the details, folks. So the 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 church of the the bride of Christ, 
that's represented by that container out there that has Revelation 3.10 written on it, I will keep you from the hour of testing because you've kept the word of my patience and you have not denied my name. I'll keep you from the hour of testing. So now it's out there getting ready to be picked up and moved to the grand meeting point. And my name means uh, Yahweh has given someone that calls the church together. And it means to call to bid forth. And the other word is meeting. Yeah, there you go. Hang on. Let me just get that on your screen. Whose surname was called and meeting. I'm sorry. Let me get one more word. To incite by word. That is to bid, to command, to come forth. Okay. To the meeting church. See a popular meeting. There it is. Okay. So. The container, which represents the Bride of Christ, is going to the great meeting, <laughs> Grand Junction, where Mike lives in Colorado. And Mike's freaking out, and I'm freaking out, but it gets even better. So then the Lord said, I'm in the details. Look up the number of Mike's house. Oh, by the way, it's, it's going to the corner of... Casimir and Rainbow. Okay, why don't you tell everybody what the Lord told you to do about your corner street? Had you ever looked up what Casimir means? No. And so I didn't even, I didn't even ever pay attention to it. And uh, so I'm in the backyard, I'm taking measurements, and um, to show Jonathan that there's enough room for a crane, there's enough room for the container in my backyard, and I hear the Lord God clear the bell say. Uh, Michael, take a picture of the corner or the crossing of your streets and send it to Jonathan. So I did it. And then he told me to look it up. <laughs> and so Michael looked up the name Casimir. And Casimir is from a Polish word meaning proclamation of peace. Oh, my gosh. Well, the Bible says you will be called the New Jerusalem. Y'all know what the word New Jerusalem is? I'm not just going to tell you. I'm going to show you. I think this is really important, Michael. I'm going to, I'm going to switch to E sword, and I'm going to go to Revelation because this is, this is really important. Revelation, chapter three. The Church of Philadelphia, and I will call you, the New Jerusalem, which is New Jerusalem which is Jerusalem, that is the capital of Palestine. And it is allusion to its two main hills because there's two main hills and it means, watch this, founded peaceful. <laughs> uh, Y'all will be the new Jerusalem. Be It was founded on two hills. And it means founded and peaceful. Okay, that's what New Jerusalem means. Because Jesus is our peace. Uh, Ephesians 2, let me take up the screen. He himself is our peace, who has broken down the middle wall of partition and made two, one, both one. His purpose was to create one new man from the two because of your duplicitousness. If that's a word, <laughs> I, I just, I think I stitched duplicitousness together. Um, anyway, because you are duplic duplicitous by nature, you have, you're double minded. That's why the Bible says, cleanse your hearts, you double minded. Isn't this getting supernaturally weird, guys? So now the New Jerusalem container, the Bride of Christ, is going to go to the corner of Rainbow Drive and proclamation of peace wow that's weird well the lord said jonathan look up his address just like my address was very significant again it meant eight regeneration and rebirth and 22 the key of david and that's uh the the fulfillment of the davidic covenant in revelation 3 7 jesus holds the key that shows he is the fulfillment of the davidic covenant covenant the ruler of the new jerusalem and that's what that that container represents the bride of christ and so now the container is going to get picked up out of the 
out of the house, the old house, because the old house has been taken over by the enemy, just like the Twin Towers were burned down and they put the One World Freedom Tower in its place because the spirit, the other spirit that is the spirit of the world that everyone's born with has taken over the system now. Because for you to get out of here, you got to be born again of another spirit that came into the system. That's called the Holy Spirit. So that spirit came in through a virgin, broke down the gates of hell, went back to the Father, and then can can come and grab anyone he wants out of the system. It's perfect. It's absolute perfection. Okay, so the Lord said, look up the meaning of 1 and 54. So... I'm going to show you my my searches, and I just typed in Bible meaning. It can't be some angel meaning. Otherwise, you're getting into numerology. Do not do angel meanings. Do not look for other meanings. Only Bible meanings. So the Bible meaning, look, meaning of numbers in the Bible, the meaning of the number one. The number one is only divisible by itself. It is independent of any other numbers, yet composes them all. It symbolizes in the Bible the unity and primacy and the oneness of the Godhead, because we're about to become one with God. What is known as the Shema, you know, like Shema, O Israel, for the Lord your God is one. And that's when I pray. I'm just going to look at the screen. When I pray, I say, you know, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the presence of Jehovah Shema. Because, ugh, like my boat. Wow, that took my breath away right there. That literally, I was like, oh, oh. I mean, literally got me, got me live. That's crazy. Okay, so what is known as the Shema of Israel? The quote from, from verse 4 in Deuteronomy 6 4 is often used in Jewish prayer services. The number one represents the unity between God the Father, His Son Jesus, Jesus, by his singular sacrifice, has made possible for the forgiveness of all our sins. He is the one mediator and the shepherd, 1 Timothy 2.5 and John 10.16 in the life of a Christian. Okay, so there you go. So the meaning of one, and Michael's at 154 Rainbow Drive at the corner of Rainbow, by the way, which was a covenant to Noah. God, y'all know that. Y'all know that the rainbow was a covenant to Noah, right? And that God promised that he would never destroy the earth with water again. And he put a rainbow in the sky as that covenant to Noah. Okay, so that's why it's been hijacked by, you know, certain groups. Anyway, so now let me show you what the number 54 means in the Bible. <laughs> 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 okay, wait. Let's do. Let's do that live. <laughs> get ready, <laughs> y'all. Get ready to. Uh, uh, there's probably going to be some toes pointing at the ceiling after this one. Okay, so yeah, here we go. <laughs> I know Mike was getting a little dizzy while I was sending him all this stuff. Okay, 54 in the Bible. Bible meaning of 54. Look, you can see there's my. My Google search, Bible meaning of 54. Isaiah 54, sing barren woman. You who never bore a child burst into song. Shout for joy, you who were never in labor. Because more are the children of the desolate woman, which represents us, than of her who has a husband, which is the host body system, says the Lord. Now, let me show you some. So, Bible meaning of 54 is Isaiah 54. Well, let's go to Isaiah 54. Everybody that needs to take a volume, take it now. <laughs> Anyone who needs to take something to calm you down, do it now. Sing, O barren, you know, because we haven't been birthed yet into our new bodies. We're, we're awaiting the birthing into our new bodies. But we're not going to go through the travail. The travail is coming. The great tribulation, we're going to be instantly birthed in the twinkling of an eye. Boom. It'll be over. 
we're going to just get all of a sudden, boom, we're there. It's not going to be like all the horror on this planet that a lot of people think, you know, the pre-trib, post-trib. They have no understanding. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. This represents the host body system than the married wife, saith the Lord, because they have their host body system. Enlarge the, tent, the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right and the left hand by thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither shalt thou be confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame, for you shall forget the shame of thy youth and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood. Because what's a widow? Someone that doesn't have a husband anymore. Here you go. Pay attention. Okay, let me look at everybody. Pay attention now. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is it. Okay. For thy maker is thine husband. You know, like the bride and groom. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, like the number eight, redeemed, regenerated. The God of whole the earth shall be called, he be called. For the Lord God has called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth. When thou wast refused, saith God, for a moment I have forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Okay, Michael, what streets are you on the corner of again? Rainbow and Casimir. So, uh, isn't this odd? 154 Rainbow. For as the waters of Noah unto me, for, wait, for this is as the waters of Noah unto me. What is? What he's talking about, everything he's talking about, for this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. Do y'all know what that swear was? That was a rainbow. So I have sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart and the hills shall be removed. Now, this is really interesting because the containers going to be looking at hills and mountains now but my kindness shall not depart from me neither shall my covenant of peace be removed oh my gosh wait a minute covenant of peace time out mike's at the corner of rainbow <laughs> mike's at the corner of rainbow and proclamation of peace. You got to be kidding me, right? I mean, you're kidding me. Proclamation of peace and Rainbow Drive, Grand Junction, the great meeting, the great meeting, the same as the word church, the great meeting at the corner of Rainbow, the promise of to Noah and Casimir, the promise of peace because the New Jerusalem is that promise of peace. Bible meaning one, the oneness and singularity of God, because we're going to become one. And 54, Isaiah, bear, uh, break forth in singing, O barren woman, because that is the birth of the new Jerusalem. It is the marriage of the Lamb. Wow, you know what? Mike's building a wedding hoopah. Do you all know what a wedding hoopah is for? <laughs> oh, like the wedding supper of the lamb. <laughs> it's going to just keep getting better. <laughs> okay, so let me show you all Mike's front yard. Mike, when did you put a giant shin symbol in your front yard? Before we even talked. Before I ever even talked to you. Yep. 
Before I ever even talked to Michael, he had put the shin symbol in his front yard. When I called Michael and I said, Michael, I might be sending you a shipping container, you had already begun, you had already bought the wood to put a wedding hoopa right there in front of your shin symbol. Is that true? That is correct. Is this when we started freaking out? Yeah. <laughs> is this when I started going, oh my gosh. Is that when I went, oh my gosh. The night I got saved at the elevator, the Lord told me, go into the fire, Jonathan. And I'm like, what does that mean? Go into the stairwell because there's a guy walking downstairs in the middle flame. Oh, my gosh. It makes the same symbol. It makes the shin symbol on the elevator where I got saved the night I got saved. That is absolutely bananas. Now, let me show you guys something interesting. When you bisect a human heart, it makes the shin symbol, and it says in Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and, and give you a heart of flesh. Wow, this is getting so interesting, isn't it? So, <laughs> hang on, just let me, let me go back. <laughs> let me get these things all arranged. So, Michael's front yard, you're looking at it, guys. You, I mean... There is no way, and let me just take up the whole screen right now. There is no way you can orchestrate this. Michael has a shin symbol in his front yard. Okay. Guys, there's a glass on the counter behind me in, in between those two vases. Um, that happened the other day, and that's going to be very significant too. Um, because God had re to redeem, there is like, you remember the alphabet when we got that um, expository from the guy at the beginning and it said um, there's the, the five and the five and then you have it broke down into two halves of 11, 22 and then you have the five on one side and the five on the other side. Well, my logo for my company is a V, which is a Roman numeral five and it has fangs. Let me show you what the shin symbol uh, also represents, and it was in that thing. It the shin symbol at two front teeth. Wow, there it is. Middle Hebrew, early Hebrew, middle. He oh, like my logo, the the V with fangs back there. Two front teeth. Wow, that's crazy. And then it shows the modern Hebrew symbol of the shin symbol. There it is. Um, here we go. Sorry, man. There's so much data here, guys. It's like hard to keep track of all of it. Okay, so here we go. So Michael's front yard has a shin symbol in it. The night I got saved, uh, the Lord said, go into the fire. I did what he said. He said, go into the stairwell. And he led me out the back of the hotel. And I met his angel and I prayed to our father. And I got saved. Okay, so then all this stuff was starting to pop loose. And Michael and I were starting to realize this is obviously the Lord God orchestrating it so like uh whatever day this was and i don't remember i had to go to the doctor i woke up in my eye um i i even mentioned it in a video my my right eye was just it felt like there was a rock in it and so i was like oh my gosh michael and i were going to do the video that morning and so i i i i call i was on my way to the emergency clinic just to have someone look at my eye because it felt like there's a chunk of gravel up in my eyelid. And uh, Michael didn't know that I had already dropped off my son at school and I was heading over to that clinic. And it wrote, he wrote, if this text is too early, please forgive me. But I have to share it. So I've been up almost all night just listening to the scriptures and I'm so stressed out over this wedding arch, I get scared that my thorn will trick me and mess up. So I prayed a lot today tears, you name it. Then I felt in my spirit to look up the meaning of het, the chet symbol, het symbol, C-A-T-T, -T, the het symbol, which is on this house. And this was the first image I clicked on. The reason I was looking for the het symbol is I so I can have clarity of what and how to build this thing. Here is the image, brother. So Michael posted it on his Facebook thing, and he typed into Google, uh, and here's the image he sent me. He typed into Google. What was that Facebook? 
Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. So you went on. I'm just going to respond to your text message. You went on to something to look up the meaning of het, right? Yeah, I went on to Google um, to do um, the het, but I didn't post it on to Facebook. That's a that's my chat group that I have. Okay, you, it's a chat group. I'm sorry, it's not Facebook. So, Michael, that night or early in the morning or whatever, you were up very late stressing out. So you went yep. to look at the het symbol, and uh, this is the image that you clicked on on my screen. It says het equals the number eight, right? Correct. And then look what it says underneath it, everybody. So out of everything he could have clicked on on Google, look what it says. Jonathan, the end has come. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I was like, oh, my Lord. So out of everything he could have clicked on, he clicked on that image, but attached to that image, it says, Jonathan, the end has come. But then look what it says right here. It says, go to house tour 2016 images. And so I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to that. I'm going to go to the house tour 2016 images. So I, I and, and Michael didn't. Michael had no, Michael didn't even see that. So I went, you know what? I'll go to my personal testimony. Oh, no, there it is, house tour. So I went to the house tour, and then I clicked on this number, 2016. Now, now before I do this, guys, seriously, I mean, look at all these data points. You couldn't weave this tapestry together over time unless you were the Lord God. There's no way. So Michael's in a house that has... The shin symbol out front, all these all these data points. I have a container that represents the bride of Christ. It has Revelation three ten on the back. All these data points, addresses, numbers, every everything significant. God is in the details of everything. So anyway, so I go well. Let's look up the house tour twenty sixteen, and I clicked on the house tour twenty sixteen, and my jaw just about fell open, and I was like, oh wow. There's that head symbol that head equals out eight. And look what's on the house tour. Let, <laughs> let me click on the house tour. Let, <laughs> oh, this is just so crazy. It's like, oh my goodness. Okay, let me let this thing enlarge. This is so crazy. And I was like, oh wow, Michael. What are you building? A hoopah. A hoopah is a wedding canopy. Uh, year of covenant. Love, marriage, embrace. Partner, marriage is a chet year. A new, uh, a new year for intimacy. <laughs> and look at, the, look at the wedding hoopah. And it's got flowers all over it. Well, that's weird. Well, there's my house with the head symbol on it. Wow, there's the door from Passover. Wow, there's a wedding hoopa. And then here's a picture that says, when I see the blood, and that represents, that was a foreshadowing of Christ, when I see the blood. So, guys, we're batting like a million right now. Uh, there's nothing that can cover this base anymore. So now, obviously, everything's being completely orchestrated because the very picture that Michael clicked on the very picture he clicked on on Google was from my house tour 2016. But look what it says. Jonathan, the end has come. Jonathan, the end has come. Now, let me ask you, do you think that's a personal message from the Lord? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a personal message. Uh, Jonathan, the end has come. Oh, wow. He's not kidding. <laughs> uh, just, okay, folks. It just keeps getting better. So let's just keep going. Well, so Michael's texting me. Hey, I hope it's not too early to text, but I'm kind of freaking out because, you know, I got, you know, I couldn't sleep and I, I clicked on this hat symbol and 
oh, wow, it says Jonathan the end has come. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, it also takes you to my 2016 show note link for the house tour. Let me put that right in between these two. It also takes you to the house tour that has a hoop on it, which might happen to be up all night stressing out that he's got to make. <laughs> okay. And I'm on my way to the doctor. And when I go into the doctor, I sit down and, and I'm sitting in a room and I look up on the wall and it says Exodus, <laughs> which is like this up down, upside down shin with an X. And I'm like, weird. And I photograph it and it says Exodus Medical. And then don't forget, Michael Spears talking to me. And I look out the window when I'm in the way, I'm leaving, I'm in the waiting room. And I look out the window and I look across the street and it says, finish master. And I'm talking to Michael Spear and I go, oh my goodness, that is insane. Then it says, finish master. And it looks like a spear tip going into one pillar of the, of the letter F. And I was like, okay, my head's starting to spin. Now, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Okay, now, Michael, what kind, let's see, what kind of flowers? Let's see. I, there's so many. Let, let me see where we're at. There's so many things. Okay, guys, I'll tell you what. Let me do the gladiolas, and then we'll do your flowers. <laughs> good. Oh, my gosh. This is just, oh, it's overload. Okay, so, again, I told you by a supernatural set of events and really bizarre, I knew it was I ended up with some red gladiolas last week. This week I ended up with magenta and white gladiolas. Again, unbelievable. The whole thing's its own testimony. Just you'll have to believe me. It was completely divinely orchestrated. I ended up with white and magenta gladiolas and I was like okay and I hear the Lord say look up the meaning of magenta and white in flowers let me tell you what magenta means magenta is one of universal harmony and emotional balance it represents universal love at its highest level it promotes compassion kindness and cooperation and, and encourages a sense of self-respect and contentment to those who use it. I thought, that is crazy. It means universal love at its highest level. We already had the red gladiolas, which in the Lord said, read Ezekiel 7. And Max McLean read Ezekiel 7, the sword has come. And those were red gladiolas, like blood dipped. Okay, now let's look at the white gladiola. The gla oh, I've clicked on the wrong button. Sorry, guys. Let me see if I can get to it. Okay, here we go. And here's the meaning of white. So, there is no specific attribute to gladiolus flowers, particular colors. They are simply a symbol of fond remembrance, honor, and traditional. The flower, the traditional meaning of flowers, colors may be applied to gladiolus to give them special meaning to the recipient. Let's see. White, innocence, and purity. Now, remember, gladiola means sword. That's what the, the translation of gladiola means. So gladiola, I mean, white means innocence and purity, and magenta means the highest form of universal love. So that's very odd that I ended up with flowers that have a significant meaning. Now, here we go. There's, the, there's all the pictures from the testimony when I went to get the coffee. Now, remember... Cat wanted to hear the Lord. She wanted to open her Bible and see the word harvest while I was on my way to get coffee. We had not talked to each other. I walked into a coffee shop. They were raising money for a Christian foundation. The Lord told me to help. I helped. And this lady right here with a harvested wheat on her back started screaming, Get the crown! Get the crown! And I almost dove under a table. I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh no, stop, 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 stop. And so she she was very, 
she stopped very quickly. She was very nice. She was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, no. Like, low-key, low-key. And so then I said, you know, I wouldn't mind having a picture for a couple of friends of mine. And so I said, let's just sneak over in the corner and get a quick picture. And I, I had this girl with the camera ready to go. I said, the second I put the crown on my head, just snap the picture really quick. And then we're done. So there it is. There's the picture. This lady was screaming, get the crown, get the crown. And I was like, this is crazy. Get the crown, get the crown. And so I put the crown on over in the corner when no one was really looking. Because <laughs> it was so embarrassing. And I was like, and she has wheat. And there was a banner of, of harvested wheat right there hanging over the counter where they were serving the free coffee if you donated to their cause. Well, Kat, my friend, that wanted to see the Lord show her, she wanted the Lord to show her the word harvest in her prayer time. She's like, I'd like to open my Bible and see the word harvest. But she opened up to Second Chronicles 2311, and here's what it said. Then they brought out the king's son, and they put upon him the crown. And gave him the testimony and made him a king. And Jehoiada, which means uh, the self-existent eternal God, and his sons anointed him saying, God save the king. Now all of Atelia heard the noise. Uh, now when Atelia heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people in the house of the Lord. Look at the word Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And she looked, and behold, the king stood at his pillar at the entering inn. <laughs> and the princes and the trumpets by the king, and all the people rejoiced, and the land rejoiced, and sounded with trumpets. Okay, back to you, Michael. Michael, what kind of flowers did the Lord tell you to plant? On uh, your me to plant sunset trumpets, and I even tried fighting it. I wanted to put grapevines on. And uh, yeah. if you look at the picture of the at my house, there's lots of rocks. And my youngest son was digging into the gravel, and he found this little angel that was blowing a trumpet. And we all started giggling, like, "All right, it's trumpets." <laughs> I am. I'm struggling to see it. It looks like the trumpet picture did not populate. Right there. Yeah, that one looks like the burning bush. Yeah, I'm looking at the burning bush. So, you know what, guys? I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to populate the trumpet image so y'all can see it because it's astounding. Hang on, Michael. Okay, guys, so here we go. So, yeah, some of the, some of the pictures uh, did not populate in the folder, and thank God we got them in while it was still screencasting. So anyway, so let's see. I'm going to show you. Now I want to show you all Mike's house. <laughs> oh, my brain. So imagine this is all by orchestration from the Lord. Look at that. So now you see the big shin symbol. Remember the video you saw when this, this whole thing started uh, about the alphabet and what it represents, the Lord God Almighty. Okay, but... It incorporates other elements into this symbol, and I'm going to show that to you in a minute. So there's the wedding hoopa, and then see the two white pots? Those have the trumpet vines in them. And let's go back to the personal testimony on when Kat opened up the Bible that same morning. And it said, get, a, get the crown. And they brought out the king's son, and they put a crown on him. And they gave him the testimony and made him king. And then as she looked, behold, the king stood at his pillar, at, enter, at his pillar, entering in at the entering in, and the princes and the trumpets by the king, and all the people of the land rejoiced and sounded with trumpets. Now, Mike, did you have any idea of that when the Lord told you, I want you to put trumpet vines on your thing? You said you actually, you kind of fought it and wanted. I, I wanted to put uh, grapevines on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it took a miracle for me to back away from it. With my little son, um, he was digging in the rocks and he found this little, like, I don't even know what it was, like a wind chime. 
time kind of thing. And it was a little baby angel blowing a trumpet. <laughs> right at the base of where I put the, the one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so your son was digging in the dirt and he pulled up a little baby and angel blowing a trumpet. Of course yep. he did. <laughs> okay. So now let's let's hit the other stuff. Uh, on the okay, so let me show everybody. There's also a bush. Let me see if I can find it up here further. There's also a bush in the middle as you go through the hat symbol, as you go through the hoopa, right in the middle of the, that rock garden is a bush. And uh, why don't you tell everybody what the name of that bush is called? And I'll show them the, the tag for it while you're talking about it. Um, it's called the burning bush, and uh. How this happened, we were at uh, one of the nurseries, and we were looking for grapevines and some other, like, fruit-bearing stuff that we want to put in our garden. Not in the front yard, but in our backyard garden. And I found this, um, a, there's a bush in our front yard that is, just, it grows like a weed. I just want to get rid of it. And, but uh, Brielle, my wife, she wants to keep it. And uh, I heard in my spirit go over to this little um, stand, and I had like this little those little pot that you see, and went over there, and I was like, oh wow, burning bush. And then I immediately picked up my phone, started looking up like um, herbal remedies with bur burning bush. I don't know why it just happened. And so I walked back to the car, and I started showing Brielle about this bush to replace the bush that's also in our front yard, and. She said yes to it. So I was like, yes, you know, I want to get rid of that old bush. But then once I brought it home, the Lord told me to put it exactly where you see it in the picture. There you go. Well, what's on my screen right now is the table with the name Yahweh right side up and upside down on it as he's taken over the system. And there I have the burning flame that's on top of my tabletop that the night that the container was ready, the Lord said, okay, now I want you to make a fire outside in my fire pit. And inside the container, it looked like there was a fire burning on top of the table with his name and the Bible sitting on top of the thing. thing. This, and by the way, guys, that's where the container is going, to the corner of Rainbow, which was God's covenant with Noah, which is in Isaiah 54. It's going to the corner of Rainbow and Covenant of Peace, Proclamation of Peace. Wow, that's just crazy. <laughs> just like a wink of ink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh. For all those people that are thinking somehow uh, this is not um, legit, I hope you'll reconsider all that now because this is one of the craziest testimonies I've ever seen in my life. Everything fits together. That's what's so crazy. And by the way, guys, the Lord just let me bust Obama the serpent in the garden, uh, which is just insane. So the meanings of the flowers are significant. Not just in my house, but at Michael's house. The meanings of the colors are significant. The meaning, the meaning of everything is significant. I mean, it's all significant. The whole thing is unbelievable. Now, let's look at... Here's a little chest that um, Brielle's uh, boss gave her as a gift, right? Is that right? That's correct. And you see it makes a little latch that makes the shin symbol. Well, that's interesting because I heard the Lord say, I want you, Jonathan, to go get two shin symbols now and put them on the container down at the bottom. So I was like, really? And I was like, that is so weird. I mean, you want me to put two shin symbols on the container down low? And I'm like, okay. So I went over to my guy that does vinyl. And he, he, he's a real nice guy, but he's kind of uptight. And, you know, you just, you just do not cross over the line where you go into the production area. And he's got all kinds of signs that say, your lack of preparation is not an emergency on my part. And, you know, he has all these signs saying, like, don't mess with me, basically. And so anyway, so I walked into his shop to say, hey, uh, Lee, could you make me two shin symbols? 
And he's like, yeah. And he goes, hey, man, why don't you let me make you some of these glasses? And, you know, he's sitting there cleaning a wine glass right in front of me. I'm like, random, he's a vinyl shop guy. <laughs> I'm like, he's sitting there cleaning a wine glass like he's a waiter. And I'm like, what are you doing, Lee? He's like, yeah, why don't you let me make you some of these? And I'm like, some wine glasses? And he's like, yeah, man. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'll make them for you right right away. I'll get them ready with your shin symbol. And I'm like, that is so weird. Why would Lee be offering me wine glasses? That's so weird. And he goes, yeah, man, I'll put your logo on it. And I'm like, well, my logo is kind of, you know, earthly vampiric. <laughs> it's a V with fangs, Lee. You know, <laughs> I really don't push that advertising anymore. And I'm like, uh, and he goes, yeah, man. And he goes, just get this label number from a smart which is a restaurant supply and I'll, I'll hook you up man i'll make you a smoking deal and i'm like uh, and then all of a sudden i hear do it and i'm like that is so weird so then i'm like okay now i gotta now i gotta go get some wine glasses and so i i, I, I said i'm gonna hold you to it lee i go over there i get the wine glasses i'm back in like 30 minutes i i go here you go they wouldn't sell me five i just wanted to get five they said, you got to buy a case. There's 12 in a case. Uh, 12 is perfection of government. And I, I'm driving over there and I'm saying, Lord, do you really want me to put my logo? Do you really want me to put my logo on these glasses? That's kind of weird. And I hear the Lord say, on one side, put your logo. On the other side, I want you to put the shin symbol because you've been redeemed. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I thought about it, and I went, oh, wow. And so there's the wine glass, and then I hear clear as a bell inside of me. I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And I was just like, okay, aneurysm, aneurysm. <laughs> I'm going to have an aneurysm. I was like, oh, my gosh. And so I go over there, and I give them to Lee, and Lee makes the shin symbols for the container to be shipped. He puts a V with fangs on one side of a wine glass representing what we used to be. And then on the other side of the wine glass, on the opposing side, he put the shin symbol which is on the container. There it is. I mean, that's just, that's just mind destroying. I mean, this whole thing is so mind destroying. And so, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's nonstop testimonies. I, it, this is going to get even better. Just hang on. We're going to, we're going to get to the color of the, we're going to get to the color of the paint that Mike's going to put on there. But before we get to that color thing, I want to show you something. My brother and sister are trying to make such a move on this house that I've, I've sent them in writing. The shipping container is not part of the house. And the Lord told me transfer ownership of the container to Michael. So last night I transferred ownership and I sent a text out to my brother and sister saying, the container is going to be removed from the property. I've transferred ownership of it, so I don't even own it. And so, so then I, I, I look in my emails for, you know, the receipt for having bought the shipping container. And I got it from a place called Go Containers, uh, this guy named Mike. And I found it, and th there was a release number on it, and I'm going to show that to y'all. And this is called the container release number. And it says, we have received your payment and your release number for your container, CPWU30003-4-5. Your release number is go 5197 john Thank you. So my release number for that container was this go 5197 john and so I was like, wow, that's interesting. And the Lord said, look it up. It's very important. And I'm like, that's crazy. How could that be? Look up the Strong's Concordance 
what is the meaning in the Bible of that number? If you type in 5197 into the Bible, in the Hebrew, the word is nataf. And it means to drop, drip, to still prophesy and preach. It means, it means, God, this is just unbelievable. It means to drip, dripping, dropped, speak, spokesman. And the Lord told me, because that's what I've been doing. I've been dripping it into you over all these years. Dripping, dripping, dripping my spirit into you constantly, constantly dripping it into you so you could finish this mission. Amen. So if y'all think that is a coincidence, well, then I've uh, got some oceanfront property in Arizona. <laughs> From the front porch, you can see the sea. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, so anyway, yeah, so the Lord's like, yeah, no, I've been dripping it into you this whole time. I'm the one that's doing this. I'm using you as a host body to do it through, and we are going to finish our mission together, and you are going to send this to Mike. And so then Mike heard in his spirit, to put paint on the container, I mean, put paint on the wedding hoopa that's got trumpet vines on the side of it. And go ahead, Mike. I've got it on the screen now. Tell them what you heard. I heard the Lord say, you'll know which paint by its name. And right then I started to panic because, you know, you go to Home Depot and there's literally can after can after can. <laughs> I'm literally going to have to look at <laughs> and so tell everybody so about the walk in, the first tag we got uh, right there says rapture red it was the first one so <laughs> so the the very first paint sample you picked up was called rapture red yeah absolutely I, crazy i hope you bought that one <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's not it <laughs> maybe I should continue yeah, maybe I should continue looking through all these. Maybe I should look at 45 to 100 more paint samples. Uh, so, anything you want to add, Michael? I don't know, brother. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's overwhelming. It's like, oh my gosh. It is so amazing. But it's yeah, I think we're good right now. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, no. a lot of information. Yeah, it's a lot of information. So, again, I want to be very clear. It's not that Michael and I don't enjoy meeting people, but the problem is Satan sends his minions, and they come in the name of the Lord. That's the problem. And so we can't have people showing up at our houses. It's unacceptable in any way, shape, or form. No, I'm I'm stating publicly, no one's allowed to come by my house. There's security measures that have been taken here that you don't want to find out about anyway. So just, yeah, please be smart. And nobody is allowed to come by my house. I'm stating that publicly at all. If you hunt down my address for some strange reason and you think the Lord's sending you, let me tell you something. It's not the Lord sending you because I work for the Lord. I work for the Lord God. And I'm saying... No one's allowed to come by here. So if you say otherwise, then you're contradicting the one who works for him. So, amen. Amen. Add to that? Please add to it. It's every, everything that Brother Jonathan has shown you in just this testimony today. If you think that we won't know that it's okay, that's insane. We'll know. Abba lets us know everything. Right. So, you know, please. And, you know, the thing is, those... Those people that think, oh, well, God sent me. No, God didn't send you because I'm publicly proclaiming no one's allowed to come here. So there it is. Okay, so God, peace and grace, guys. So, yeah, we, we have children, and we have to protect the interests of those children over above our own, you know, interests. So 
It's you don't you don't ever show up at someone's house ever. It's just it's wrong on every level. By the way, and I, I'm going to slam that home. The Bible says, "Do unto others as you would have them do unto you." Okay, well, in the past, I've had people show up that were a threat to the safety of my child, and I literally almost had to kill a guy on my front porch. He was about to die, and I told him. I said, I looked right at him with the camera in my hand with my phone stretched out and I was in fighting position and one of my weapons I used, it was knives. And I had to take, take on fighting position with a knife and I said, this is about to happen. And if he would have come one more step in the house, he would have stabbed and stabbed so many times so fast, it would have been horrible. And I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to do that to anybody. So don't come by my house. And, you know, because it's a threat. If anyone comes by my house, then it would be a threat to my child. And so now that y'all know that I've already gone through that, why would you ever come to my house? That's insane. Unless you mean to do ill. Unless the wrong spirit sent you. That's the only reason you would come to my house at the wrong spirit sent you because the Bible says do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So now I'm telling you, wow, the last thing I want is for anyone to come by my house for any reason. And if you say God sent you, then I know who I'm dealing with Amen. because there's no way God would send you because he doesn't want me to have to live like that. And the same would probably go, I'm sure for Michael, and I'm not going to speak for him, but he already said, no, it's not okay. Okay, we shared a testimony with you, and we put ourselves out there for the Lord, so we'll also put ourselves in the hands and the protection of the divine, the Lord God Almighty. And I'll tell you what, you want to mess with him? Go ahead. See what happens. All right. Anything else, Michael? No, I'm good, brother. Okay, so anyway, so yeah, uh, let me read the end of Isaiah 54 real quick for everybody. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created water to the waster to destroy. No weapon that is forged against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is in me, saith the Lord. All glory to God. So, we're, I'm sure we're going to have a lot more testimonies, guys, but there's an hour and 57 minutes of, wow. <laughs> All right, Michael, God bless you, man. Thanks for, uh, you know, being so patient. You're very, Amen, very, very easy, patient guy. Thank you. Amen, brother. Okay, guys. So there it is. There's the container testimony. Everything's been orchestrated, and I mean everything. The whole thing's been planned out. You can see it now. You can see the orchestration of his name, my name. You can see the orchestration of the container, what I did before I got saved, the artist, the, you know, the artist Jonathan that used light, light as a medium in order to, you know, expose that which was hidden in darkness. I literally carved exactly what I'm exposing in metal using light to expose all of this. All what our names mean. The, you know, the, the significance of the house I live in, the address, the shipping container, everything I did before I got saved, falling upside down, out of the sky, you know, come out of the darkness, upside down, into the light, look like I'm crucified. Looks like there's a giant face looking right at me. I mean, what are the odds Someone would have a picture like that of themselves. I mean, seriously, what are the odds? You know, I mean, you know, it's all impossible. You know, V for vengeance, uh, you know. <laughs> ah, get the crown, get the crown. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. So anyway, let's have fun. Let's enjoy the end because the end's here. And, you know, let's... Uh, Let's let's have fun with it. If y'all want to have fun with it, just you know, stick with all the the things we've asked. And anyone that steps over that boundaries, well, then you got to deal with the the Lord God. And I guarantee you, He'll make it happen according to His will, 
not to your will. I guarantee it. So be very careful because, again, read Isaiah. No weapon forged against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Okay, so anyway, the rapture is coming. The bride of Christ will be leaving. The container is going to take a trip, and uh, I'm probably going to lose my residence because it's a manifestation of what the enemy has done. The enemy has taken over the temple of God, which is what this house represents, the house of the Lord. They've taken it, but the bride is leaving, and they can have the planet, and they can go through the hour of trial. I'm not worried about it. Now, okay, there you go. So now, last thing. Some people have asked, and I'm going to do this for the people that have asked. Some people have said, hey, what's your PayPal link and all that? And we can always use help no matter what because we got a lot to do. I mean, there's going to be lots of stuff coming up I mean, right now. And uh, so let me show you how to do it. Let's see. Jonathan Kleck. Uh channel view channel there it is sorry yeah i usually go to my creator studio here it is like right here the, by the way if you go to my channel thing you should watch you are exiles the entire crime. dvd and this thing really has so much data in it but anyway if you want to help with the cause you want to be part of look anyone that wants to be part of this cause and wants to financially support this cause great I mean, we're, we got to go up to Colorado. We got to build four concrete footings. We got to get a container out of here. We got to put it on a truck or a rail system. We got to get a crane over here to pick it up. We got to send it to Colorado. <laughs> we got to set it down. We got to hook up the electrical, you know, and, like, and I'm like, ah, I got to do all this while I have the wolves coming from this house. <laughs> It's so exciting. I can't stand it. Yeah, but I was trained for this, man. This is my whole life. My whole life is a manifestation of what he had me train here to do. It's like, it's it's unbelievable. It's like, so anyway, we got a lot of stuff to get done quickly. He said, do it now. So, yeah. I wish someone would just get those footings done like immediately in Colorado. I may have to go to Colorado this week just to get them done. So anyway, yeah, we'll see what happens. Anyway, God bless you guys. And uh, maybe I can find the right contractor online in Colorado. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, God bless. We're going to ship that container to the corner of Rainbow and the Covenant of Peace. Casimir and Rainbow, one. Shema, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, because we're going to come together as one. The Grand Junction, the great meeting place. <laughs> You're like, oh, you couldn't even think this stuff up. Yeah, yeah, 54. Isaiah 54, the covenant he made with Noah and the covenant he's making with us. The covenant of peace. So be at peace, guys. Again, okay, anybody wants to jump in? Uh, and help, there you go, jk at jonathanclick.com, PayPal to that address, or you can go to J K L E C K P O box 91281, yep, S-A-T-X. San Antonio, Texas. Seven eight two zero nine. So you can go to J Cleck at J Cleck, P.O. Box nine one two zero one two eight one, San Antonio, Texas seven eight two zero nine. You can send it there, or you can help us there. And like I said, you know, only, listen, I'm serious. Only do it if you're led to do it. Don't, you know. Don't put yourself in any kind of a bind to help us because we're fine. 
We'll always be fine. God's running the show. If you want to be part of it, that's awesome. Be part of it. Help us out. But if, if you if you can't afford it, just say a prayer for us. Say, Lord, you know, you know, some people have resources financially. Some people have prayer resources. Some people are prayer warriors. You know, some people get together with others and pray. Just do whatever feels right for you. Okay? That's it. Amen. All right. All right, guys, it's getting exciting. Woo-hoo! Yeah, there's a good example of the paradigm right there. See that right side up, upside down, one tree dark, one tree light? That's it. That's the story. I'd like to see if one more image populated into this thing because I did send it, and I want to see if it's there. I'd really like to show you guys one more image if I could, see if it, see if it made it in. It's... Uh, it is no it didn't make it in that's all right i don't see it that's all right all right well anyway there we go it's all about to happen guys the container which represents the church that's leaving is going to the great meeting place on the corner of rainbow and covenant of peace and the address of the lord your god is one which is Shema, O Israel. The Lord your God is 154, burst forth into singing, for the barren woman is about to give birth, and the bride is about to go. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, guys. Bye.